What's up guys? It's Matt with Galaxy Games 843. We're back with another video, but no vending in this video. This is an arcade video today, starting off with this lovely cabinet you see right here. This is a Hypersports original cabinet converted to Tetris, and this one's got an interesting story. So, a buddy of mine, who also happens to be the owner of our game store location, has been looking for a Tetris machine because he wants to have the Tetris machine in the game store on free play so he doesn't have to worry about the licenses and tax stamps and all that good stuff. But he wants it to look presentable and allow, allow his customers to come in and play Tetris, have tournaments, all kinds of stuff like that. So I actually found this, uh, this Tetris on Facebook in one of the arcade groups. And luckily it all lined up where he was able to get somebody to pick it up and bring it down to South Carolina because it was in the state of Virginia. But here it is. He basically brought it here and he said, Matt, we need to make this game look good. So as you can see, it's got a little damage on it. So let me show you around. So in the front here, you can see we've got some damage to um, the wood over here and there's a little bit over here as well. Um, and quite honestly, if I were restoring this back to a hypersports cabinet, I'd probably have to either rebuild all that up with Bondo or cut new wood and, you know, make it, make it all original. Since it's not being restored to an original hypersports game, um, I'm probably going to do something that some purists out there might frown upon. I'm probably just going to shave the front down a little bit uh, to make it nice and clean, uh, cut new team molding grooves, and just make everything, you know, coherent. Because we, what we want to do is we want to get this game looking nice. Because he wants to get it in the store ASAP. So some of the other things we got going around the shop, you can see we've got this uh, this toy taxi claw machine here. Um, it's currently throwing an error, and I'm not sure that I'm going to have time to really get working on it. So that might just end up going to the next auction. Um, let's see what else we got. We got... Um, do you remember uh, that capsule machine? We, we picked up a lot of capsule machines, and then we picked up some other inventory. So we've got this uh, capsule machine here that we actually filled with some of that Spongebob inventory uh, that came in that bulk deal. Um, I was able to order a new display card from AA Global. And with that, that might end up going to the game store as well. We're still working on that deal right now. But anyway, so typically I don't do bulk vending. But heck, I mean, if I got all the stuff, why not, right? So maybe we'll try it out. Uh, we still got this vending machine here. We're waiting for our... Um, new location to open up or get to be ready for it uh, we've also got that soda machine back there that was from our car um car service shop it was doing like 20 to 30 dollars a month and it was doing terrible so i hate having it sit here in the shop uh, but it is what it is that claw machine's going away we've got that change machine project there um, but really what we're focusing on right now is this tetris cabinet so let's pull it out Let's get a better look at the damage to the front. We'll start, uh, you know, taking a look and see what's working, what's not working. Because obviously we're going to need to make sure everything's working properly. And get it uh, all bulletproof and ready to go for the store. So let's get it, uh, you know, let's see what we can do. Let's pull the machine out and let's take a better look at it. Alright, we got the machine pulled out. And as you can see, that front edge, especially that left side, is just, it looks like, a dog chewed the front of it off. I don't know. Um, the team molding groove is completely gone. But, you know, when, when this stuff is like particle board, if it even thinks about water, it just kind of shreds. So I think that's what's going on. Um, let's take a look. Let's move around to the side here and get a better shot. There you go. You can, I mean, look at that. There's just like two marks right here. It's, it's crazy. So we're definitely going to need to address that. We're probably just going to cut it off. Um, definitely needs a new coat of paint, new tea molding. Um, what else we got? We got, it looks like maybe some artwork. Looks like they might have just painted over the old artwork. So, look at that. You can see these edges here. Um, probably old Hypersports artwork under there. Uh, so that'll need to be addressed. We'll probably need to pull that off, sand it, repaint it, maybe prime it. Who knows? Uh, let's take a look at the control panel. So, control panel. I know it looks bad right now, guys. Um... But we might be able to salvage this and make this look good. Part of this is, it's got this protective plexiglass here. Um, and it looks like somebody might have spilled some soda or something underneath because it's like, it's all junky under there. It's, it's pretty gross. So once we pull all this apart, probably want to replace the buttons. The buttons look old and sticky. Um, joysticks should be good to go. Um, so we'll definitely uh, be able to probably reuse those. 
Probably gonna replace the buttons, but definitely need to clean this whole area. And there's a little bit of little bit of damage on the front corners. Um, I think we can get away with leaving that though. Um, for the front of the cabinet, we've got definitely some adhesive from some looks like some duct tape over here. Um, but for the most part, it looks like it just needs a good cleaning. Maybe a maybe a little paint touch up. I don't know. We'll see what we can do. Um, there is an LCD screen inside, just kind of sitting in there, and uh, you know, like a cardboard bezel um so not sure if we can reuse that we'll definitely try um i know you can't see the lighting is bad right here but the, we got a, a marquee it's a little faded the metal work um around the marquee definitely needs sanded repainted um so that's that let's take a look at the inside of the cabinet all right here we are inside the cabinet you can see it's got an lcd screen uh just a basically a, a computer screen it's got it looks like they, they got a little creative with the mounting of it. Um, they've created like a, a setup to just hold it in place because it's not actually attached. Just kind of sitting there. And they used like black foam board to look like attempt to black out the area around the monitor. We're definitely going to do a little, a little differently. We'll make it look much better than that. Uh, not sure if we're going to still use that existing setup. But I can see they've got um, a VGA to... No, I'm sorry, this is a CGA to VGA converter to convert the video signal to be able to pump it out into that monitor. And that's what you use in order to get an LCD screen in an actual arcade cabinet. All right, let's look down at the bottom. So as you can see, there's you know, kind of a mess of wires down here. A little bit old, a little bit of new. Um, and when I say new, I don't mean new like right now new. We're going to make it even newer. But it's got an arcade switching power supply over here. Um, JAMA harnesses ran. It's got the PCB back behind that. I know you can't see it right now. Um, but the wiring looks like there might be a combination of the original wires or somebody used a really old JAMA harness. Um, what else we got? We got an arcade transformer down there that um, converts the, uh, well, it doesn't convert. It's basically an isolation transformer for the old CRT monitor. So we definitely don't need that. Um, looking inside, what else we got? There's some sort of token or something in there. Let's, let's see what that is. All right. Here we go. Um, uh, I know you can't read that on camera. Let's see if we can put it so you can see it. Looks like a pachinko token. Metal pachinko token. It's got some Japanese writing in the middle. And like a little star pattern or something on the back. Can you see where it says Pachinko? There it is. So, who knows, this must have been next to uh, somebody's little Japanese slot machine or something in their home home use. I don't know. Anyway, so what we're going to have to do is we're definitely going to need to clean the heck out of this cabinet. It's got dust, it's got spider webs, it's, you know, the, the typical, typical stuff you find in an arcade cabinet. Um, definitely got to make it look nice, new team molding. I'm going to put a new switching power supply in there. Um, I'm going to make sure the wiring is done right, uh, because we definitely don't want it to uh, cause any electrical issues, especially being that it's going to be on a lot, because it's going to be in a store. Um, there's the original Hypersports tag. You see that? Look at that right there, the Hypersports tag. That's pretty cool. So it definitely wasn't a track and field, it was a Hypersports. Uh, it's got the Century sticker right there. Kind of painted over. But yeah, so there you go. So again, let's see, what all, what all do we need to do? New switching power supply, new T-molding, bodywork, paint, a new marquee light, uh, sanding the metalwork, repainting that, cleaning the control panel, new buttons. Hopefully that's all we'll need to do. But it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a little, we're, we're gonna be in for the long haul. Like I said, we gotta make it look nice and we gotta make sure it's reliable because it's going on a location technically even though it's not going to be accepting coins, it's going to be on free play. So uh, next, let's get it uh, set up. Let's see how it's working now before we get started on all, all the cosmetic stuff. So we'll be right back. All right, back at the front of the game. Let's go ahead and plug it in and let's see what happens. So uh, I'm pretty sure it's been tested working, but we're going to make sure real quick. We're going to power it up and see what happens. We got our monitor starting up. It's warming up there. Let me turn off the big light. So 
So definitely that area needs cleaned. Looks a little dim right now. Um, it's on free play, so let's uh, let's let's see if we can start a game. Here we go. We'll play a quick game. And what's cool about the uh, the Tetris um, arcade model is it's a uh, versus game, so you can play two player and battle each other. Um, so that's one thing I think they're going to be focusing on in the game store is having tournaments and allowing the customers to battle each other, which would be pretty cool. So I'm excited for that. One thing, though, is I am not a Tetris master. Oh, see, I already messed that up. This game is going to be over real fast. All right, we made a line. Let's make one more line. <laughs> All right, we'll shut it down. So we, <coughs> we can see that it's working. Let me turn the big light back. So the good news is we shouldn't have to do anything electronic-wise with the board. Um, we just, like I said, we got to give it a good cleaning and do everything very cosmetic, cosmetic work on this machine. So we can certainly do that. We're going to start by, uh, we're going to remove the monitor. We're going to remove the PCB. We're going to remove the glass, the marquee, the control panel, if we can. If, if there's disconnects in there, we'll see about that. Um, and then we'll, we're going to start to get to work. We'll, we'll take the T-molding off of it, and we'll start uh, focusing on that front. Because honestly, everything else, the paint, cleaning, that's all easy. The only part I'm dreading, and I'm not going to lie, the only part I'm dreading is addressing these front panels. Um, like I said, typically if I was restoring it as an original Hyper Sports arcade cabinet like it's supposed to be, I would, uh, I, I would have to either replace that or bondo that up, which, you know, that, that's going to take a long time. So we're definitely not going to do that uh, for this cabinet. Again, for the arcade purist out there, don't beat me up in the comments. Yeah, I'm going to do a little little surgery on this cabinet that you're probably not going to like because I'm going to, I'm going to, I think I'm going to have to cut the, the front panels flush with the, with the actual front of the cabinet. So again, don't beat me up in the comments, guys. This isn't my game. This is what the customer wants. They want it to look nice. They want it to be a Tetris, not a Hypersports. So... I know, I, I like my games pure too, but this one is already gone. There's nothing hypersports inside of it. No CRT monitor, no PCB, nothing. So don't be mad at me, guys. All right. Let's go ahead and start taking it apart. Well, first we got to unplug the game. So let's do that first. And then we'll start taking it apart. All right, game's unplugged. Let's, uh, let's remove this crappy, ugly T-Molding. Let's do that first, because this T-molding is gross. T-molding is really cool when you remove it, too, because you can just kind of pull it. Let's see. Watch this. It just comes off like that. Look at that. Pulling that T-molding right out. Here we go. Down the back side. There's our first side of T-molding. This is uh, this is old, beat up. It's got chewed up ends. So we're definitely we're not going to reuse it. T-molding is cheap to replace. So we're just going to throw the old stuff away. Right in the trash. All right. This other side has even less T-molding. <laughs> Look at that. Even less. There you go. More crappy tea molding. Let's get rid of it. All right. With the flapping tea molding off, the game already looks better. It's going to look great, though, once we get new tea molding on it. So one thing I can see is I can see it's definitely been painted, obviously. We knew that because the, the artwork's painted over. But when you take the tea molding off, if you look at the edges, you can see how this isn't the original bare wood, kind of like over here. See, see how they, they kind of went in with the paint right there? That's one way you can tell if a cabinet has been repainted. All right, um, let's see what we want to take off next. Let's see how this top piece works here. So there's, oh, there's carriage bolts. Really? Okay, the top one is uh, screws, it feels like. So let's see if we can't find the screw heads for that.
There's one. The second one. Three screws removed. So I know you can't, I know it's tough to see with the lights. So, so, so look at this, uh, look at this marquee bracket. See how it's all like rusty and peeling away. That's why we're going to need to sand it, wire brush it and repaint it. It's all flaky on the top there. You don't want to put that back out there. You want to make it look nice. So we'll set that aside for now. Let's go ahead and pull the marquee off. And just like I thought, it's a trans light on a piece of plexiglass. So we should be able to reuse that. We can probably clean that up real good. Um, if we can't reuse it though, because I don't know, it might be a little bit faded. We'll see. We'll see how it looks once we get it all done. We'll see. All right, now, so looking at the marquee light, it's definitely burnt out. It's an old, uh, it's an old uh, receptacle fixture. We're probably gonna upgrade that to LED because you can buy, you know, replacement LED lights at Walmart for like eight bucks now. So we'll probably do that as part of our, part of our work here. Um, all right, we're gonna leave that for now. It looks okay. Let me take a look at this control panel. Um, I'm gonna look at it from the back. Nope, it's got a wall there. Can't reach it from the back. All right, let me see if I can't. This is this is the part that's, that's scary because you got to reach your hands up in the, under there. You never know what you're grabbing for. You never know what kind of critters or animals or anything are lurking up here. So, oh, I can't even find it. All right, right well, I cannot figure out that control panel right now. And quite honestly, the thing's so full of cobwebs and spider webs and who knows what else is in there. So before I, I stick my hands up there any much more, I'm going to go ahead and give it a good cleaning. So let's uh, let's go ahead and take the monitor out for now. We'll take this piece of glass out if we can. We'll get that all worked out first. So what, what I'm doing, know, I know it's tough to hear you guys. What I'm doing, I'm disconnecting the monitor from the VGA conversion board, the CGA to VGA conver conversion board. So that way... Pop everything out of here. All right, so there's our LCD monitor that's in there. Now that we got that out of the way, let's see about the rest of it. We've got so much weird conversion stuff in here. It's not original to the cabinet. It's so strange. in there comes out of there so it's, it must have to come out through here yeah we'll work on taking all this apart um but what i really want to focus on is i, I really want to get the part of that i'm dreading out of the way so we might just lay this cabinet down and just just tackle it real quick um yeah i'll, I'll do a little work off camera for prep and then we'll be right we'll be right back all right, we're back. We got the front glass and cardboard taken off from around the monitor area. And we laid the cabinet down on its side. I did some measuring. I did uh, kind of some prep work. And I measured and I drew a line there. So as you can see, that line is where we need to cut. And I did a little finagling up at the top. So it's, gonna, it's actually going to jet out at the control panel as well. So like I said, I know I'm going to get beat up <laughs> for doing this. 
But remember guys, this game was trashed. So it is what it is. We need to make it right. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut that line and then we'll go ahead and make it look pretty after that. So remember guys, safety first. Got my safety goggles here. And I'm going to get my little circular saw. I'm gonna cut this freehand and it's gonna be great. Let's see how we can do this. Broom this guy off, this guy off real quick here. All right, so with that done, let me show you how the front looks. So again, not original, but I think it looks pretty good. It looks much better than it did without that water damage on there. Um, so the next step, while we got it right here on its side, we might as well cut the T-molding groove. Let's do that real quick. All right, so for the T-molding groove, I've got a Ryobi router with a slot cutting bit in it. And again, got to use your say, your uh, your eye protection because this this tool really shoots the sawdust out. <clears throat> I can't remember which way. Okay, it turns like that. It's weird. All right, so it turns like this. So we want to start up there and work our way down. So it kind of cuts like a saw would.
All right, it's the next day, and we've got our team molding grooves cut. Um, I'm going to have to clean them up a little bit. Those bumps kind of messed me up a bit, but we got them all cleaned up. So here's the cabinet as of right now. It still needs uh, LED light replacement. Um, the next thing we're going to tackle is probably the sides. We're going to make them look good. I know it's kind of tough to see with the light. I got the uh, door open here, but you can still see the outline of that old sticker there, so we need to address that. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to throw some citrus strip on there. If you haven't used citrus strip, it's great for removing paint and adhesives and stickers and things like that. So we're going to set the uh, cabinet down on its side and apply some citrus strip, and we're going to see what happens. So we'll be right all right, here's the cabinet on its side, and what we're going to use today is we're going to use some citrus strip. Yeah, this is some good stuff. It's uh, not real toxic. It's got no harsh fumes. It actually smells pretty good. Um, kind of smells like oranges, obviously, being the name citrus strip. And we're just going to go, and we're going to throw some right here on the cabinet. And get it open here. And this is a brand new bottle, so I've got to break the seal. Oh, it's got more plastics. Let me, let me grab a screwdriver. Alright, there we go. Now all I'm going to do is just kind of squirt it on here and then I'm going to use an old paintbrush that I have designated for citrus strip right for this uh, to, to kind of even it out. Alright, how artistic looking, right? Now. <laughs> I usually just kind of lay it out, and I like to lay the cabinet down on the side when I'm doing this, so that way uh, gravity is not working against me, it's actually working for me. So I've got this old, gross, um, old paintbrush that's designated as my citrus strip paintbrush. And all I'm going to do is just kind of paint this stuff out on this adhesive sticker thing, whatever you want to call it. This paintbrush is quite old. I've done this many times with this paintbrush, so it's going to fall apart it's on me as I'm working, and that's okay. Because it, this part doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to be perfect. All we have to do is get this slime out all over the, uh, the area that we're working with here. This product also works great if you're trying to save vinyl artwork that's been painted over. So for example, let's say you have a Mortal Kombat 2 cabinet uh, that's got the vinyl artwork from Midway on it and it's been painted over with say spray paint or latex or whatever. This is a great option to spread it all over the paint like this. Let it sit uh, and with something like that where you're trying to save vinyl artwork underneath. You want to kind of time yourself and see how long it takes because generally I kind of like to let it sit for about 10 minutes on that kind of thing. This one, I don't care about any artwork that's underneath here. In fact, I'm trying to remove it. So I'm going to let it sit longer and let it just kind of eat its way down through the paint and through that vinyl artwork. I don't care if it gets damaged. I want it to be damaged because I want to, I want to peel it off. All right, we're at the one hour mark and we're gonna do a little test. You can see there's some bubbling down here, but where I put it on real thick, there's still not, there's no, not a lot of bubbling. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a cheap plastic scraper and we're just gonna see what happens here. Yeah, not much happening yet. There might be multiple layers of paint on this, so you can see a whole layer is coming off over here. Now, I know this is pretty gross, but the cool thing about it is, 
is now we got like a top layer taken off here. And all I'm gonna do is just take all this existing gross stuff and just kind of paint it back out. Now, obviously, if you're in a hurry, you could just sand this really good. I'm not in a hurry. I'm just kind of working on this in between other chores I'm working on. So um, we're just going to let that go. We're going to let the, uh, the citrus strip do the work for us. So we just did a check. Everything's good. It's coming along good. Um, this probably seems like some pretty heavy-duty paint, so it's actually taking a little longer than it normally does, but that's okay. Uh, like I said, we're just uh, letting it work for us while we're doing other things. So... We're going to go another hour or so and come back and see how it looks. We'll be back. All right, we're back. And it's been a little over an hour. Um, I've been doing stuff around the house and, you know, getting things done. Um, I'm seeing a lot of bubbling in there, but it's still probably not as much as I thought I'd see. Again, it seems like Citrus Dip has uh, changed the formula. Let's see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, it's getting down to the actual artwork, and it's taking the front of the artwork off, so it's just going to be white. just about there. If you hold the scraper at a more of an angle, you can see how it how it peels off that extra layer of paint for me. So I'm just gonna work on this for a little while. And you may ask yourself why I'm spending so much time doing this. Ultimately, I want to get this artwork off of here so I have a nice uniform one layer surface to work with, which is my ultimate goal. All right, so I'm sure you don't want to watch me scrape this for hours, so I'm going to work on this off camera, and then we'll be back once we get a lot of this scraped off. All right, we're back working on the Tetris, and as you can see, things are looking a little bit different since the last time we were working on this cabinet. So when we left off in the last, the last section of the video we were working on, I know a little time has passed over, uh, but we did all the body work on this cabinet, we did the paint, uh, and I'm going to kind of update you on some of the things we're still doing. So let's get a little closer look here. So... Moving into the cabinet, remember the sides had all that extra excess paint on it, need some body work done. So we did all that off camera. We, re, we did Bondo work, we repainted it. You know, if you'd like to see that kind of stuff, there's a ton of videos out there online already. But if you'd like to see us do some of that too, we can certainly do that. Just put it down in the comments if you'd like to see that. And we can do that in a future video. Uh, but here's where we're at. So one of the things that the Century cabinets use is offset team molding. And the T-molding that we're going to be using on this cabinet is red, three-quarter inch, straight down the middle T-molding. So what we had to do, now remember, in a, you know, earlier we, we had cut the T-molding channel down here, right? So we already recut that. But up here, this whole section up here, and up, up top here, this was all offset T-molding. So what we actually did was we actually packed it with Bondo, 
painted it. So uh, in, in one of our upcoming shots, we're going to have to reroute team, the team molding groove in this as well. Um, but what we're going to focus on in this section of the video is this old marquee light right here. So, you know, these are the original marquee lights from 1980, whatever. It's got a, um, a ballast inside right here. I don't know if you can see that, probably not on camera. It's got the bulb. It's got a starter. But just, just look at this thing, guys. It's like, to me, that's just not safe. So there's no way I can let that fly. So we're actually going to be replacing that with a brand new LED. Um, this is a Walmart special. We call these the Walmart special here in the, uh, in the arcade groups. This is, uh, I think, $9 at Walmart. And it's just going to mount right up there in place of this thing. And it's just going to tap right into the same 120 volt lines that come in over the side over here. So in order for us to get a good view, let's see. Oh, this is mounted. Okay, this is mounted with carriage bolts through the top. So I'm going to go ahead and work on removing that, and I'm going to show you how we're going to put this all together. It'll be pretty easy, though. Real easy, actually. So let me get this, uh, let me get this old one removed, and then I'll show you how we're going to do it. So we'll be right back. All right, so here we go. We've got the old fixture removed, and as you can see, it's just like a, a big conglomeration of wires. You, we don't know what's going where. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out which wires we're going to use because we're going to we're going to reuse this connector. This already is getting 120 volts from the cabinet, um, and we only need 120 volts to light the LED light. So looking at the incoming wires, we've got two black wires, a green wire, a white wire, and a red wire. So let's follow them in and let's see where we go. So what I'm looking for is what these ballast wires go to. So we can see the red wire is one of the wires that goes to the ballast. The other one. Let's see. Let's go here. All right, that's on one side. So the red wire is definitely one that we're going to use. The green is a ground, but it's it's a field ground. Here's a switch. So it goes to the switch. Uh, maybe it'll be easier too if we. Can we open this up? I don't think we can. All right. So we know that these two black wires, I'm guessing this black wire is going to be the other one here. This one's here. We'll go to the other side of the switch. Oh, that's kind of funny. I wonder if it feeds back to the cabinet like that. Hmm. Now, I've never seen that many wires for a lighting a lighting fixture. One thing's for sure, the white ones we don't need. This one goes over here like so, through the starter. Okay, so we're going to go and do some tests. So let's start clipping th some things here. All I'm doing is I'm, I'm clipping the wires coming in, and we're going to pull this whole connector out. What else do we got here? And that one. All right, so we got the whole connector out. Here we go. There's the whole connector. So I'm just going to trim these wires up so they're all kind of the common same size. Here we go. Right about there. All right, so now all our wires are connected, or are the same size, I guess you could say. Um, I'm going to strip those, and we're going to do some tests. All right, sorry for the funny angle. So on this shot, what I'm doing is I've actually plugged the, uh, the connector back in to the cabinet harness. And what I want to do is I want to test which wires give me the 120 volts. So here's the ones I think give me 120 volts. I think it's a black one and the red one. Red being the positive, black being the negative. So what I'm looking for, I've got my multimeter set up here and I've got it set on AC voltage. What I'm looking for is when I plug the cabinet in, that these two wires give me 120 volts around there. So, so we're going to go ahead and plug the cabinet in. Let's see what happens here. All right. We've got 122.7, if you can see there, 122.67, 122.7, 122.7, 122.7, 122.7, 122.7, 122.7, 122.7, 122.7, 122.7, 122.7, 122.7, 122.7, 122.7, 122.7, 122.7, 122.7, 122.7,
you know, looks uh, pretty steady. So those are the two wires we are going to use in order to light our LED. So I'm going to unplug it. And what I'm going to do, just so I don't get confused, because there are two black wires there, I'm going to mark these two wires. And I'm just going to throw mainly the black one, but I'm just going to throw some duct tape on there just so I know which wire is which. So remember, the, uh, the cabinet is now unplugged, so I'm not going to shock myself. Always unplug your cabinet when you're working with your wires. So there's one side, and this is going to be the other side, this red one. All right, so these are my two wires. Okay. All right, let's go back over to our makeshift workbench. Let's unplug this. We'll go back over to the other shop. All right, here we are. So what we're going to do now is we're going to unbox this 18-inch LED slim under cabinet light. Again, this is the Walmart special. It runs about nine bucks. You can find it in the hardware lighting section. And we're just going to pop it out of the bag here. You can see it's a nice slim line LED light. Uh, and then it should come with another box with your power connectors inside. So here we go. So the good news is we don't need all of that stuff. All we really need is one of these little plug-ins. So let's see what we got here. We got two plug-ins. I'm just going to pull, we're going to undo this one here. Pull this one out. That's the only thing we need right there. So we'll, we'll set this extra piece aside. We don't need that. We can maybe use it for another project. But all we really need is this. And how that's going to work is... should plug right into here like so right and then all we have to do is cut this end off like so separate those wires a bit I like to kind of pull them apart so they're a little easier to work with but while we've got that done Grab my trusty wire strippers here and just take the uh, ends off the wires. And then these two are going to get connected to these two. Camera here so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so all I'm going to do here is just twist them together. Now, I mean, you know, you probably could solder them or put wire nuts on them, something like that. I'll see what I have. I think I've got some wire nuts. Now, let, me, let me see what I have. I'll be right back. All right, so there we go. We got our wire nuts on there. We got them taped off. We got everything all kind of cleaned up. I know it looks a little messy, but you know, no one's going to see that inside the cabinet. Kind of cleaning up my work area let's go what we're going to do now is we're going to actually set it inside the cabinet and test it so let's get set up for that is that a good view that looks like a pretty good view okay now we're not physically mounting this yet all we're doing is we're testing let me plug this in here. All right. So ultimately what we'll probably do is we'll probably mount it up here somewhere, some way, you know, to make it look nice. But right now we're just testing. We're just making sure that it works before we go and mount things up. All right, now it's just sitting in there. Let's go ahead and plug it in. And let's make sure it works. So ready? Uh, on the count of three. One, two, three. There we go. Nice bright LED light. It's not going to fade your marquee. Nothing like that. Exactly what we need to do. So the next step is to mount it in the cabinet. You can either bottom mount it or top mount it. I'm probably going to bottom mount it because I just think it's going to look a little more clean, a little more um, soft rather than being up top. So that's going to be the next step. And then we'll, uh, we'll move on to the next part of the actual game.
All right, guys, so we've done a little bit of work off camera. Um, we did the, some body work, we did some paint work, we cleaned up the control panel right in there, as you can see. So things are looking really good. So I'm not sure if anybody is really interested in seeing the whole body work process. There's a ton of videos out there already. Um, but if you are interested in seeing some Bondo work or some, some paint and all that good stuff, put it down in the comments if you'd like to see that in a future video, and we can certainly feature that in some of the upcoming projects we got going on. But anyway, this Tetris is coming along real nice. It's starting to look like a, like a, like a gem instead of a, a foot, <laughs> you know what I mean? So take a look. Um, the front looks great. We, uh, we did uh, paint on the front and paint on the sides. Cleaned up that control panel real nice. Um, got the uh, metal work all painted up. The marquee back in place. So now it's time for the T-molding. And then we'll start on the internals and the screen and all that good stuff. So for the T-molding, we're going with a red T-molding. Um, the owner of this cabinet wanted red T-molding. Wanted black paint with a red T-molding to make it pop. So that's what we're going to work on today. We're going to put this T-molding on. And then from there, we'll start working on the screen area. And then once we get the screen area done, all we got to do is cut a back door. Uh, paint the back door, put it all together, and then this thing will be ready to go. So let's do the T-molding. All right, guys, here's our T-molding, and we're going with this red T-molding. We got it from, I think we got it off eBay, but it came from uh, T-molding.com. So if you're looking for a good supplier for T-molding, T-molding.com is the way to go. Uh, looks like they also feature arcade renovations, so I don't have to check them out. But T-molding.com off of eBay is actually where we got this T-molding. So... Uh, one thing I did have to do, since the Centuri cabinets are offset T-molding, that means the groove is offset as well. So as I was doing the body process, I know it's going to be tough to see, but I had to, I had to basically um, pack the side or the T-molding groove right here with Bondo and then recut it so it was centered and not offset because the Centuri cabinets used offset T-molding. And that's just not going to work. It's hard to find offset T-molding. Um, and if you do find it, it's usually black and not red. And like I said, the owner wanted red. So this T-molding is going to go in here real nice like that. And like I said, it's just going to pop. So we're going to put that in place next before we move on to our next step. All right, here we go. One of my favorite things to do is T-molding because it kind of gives that cabinet that complete look and really finalizes the transformation. So let's get started with the T-molding. So... As you know, I have to use a rubber mallet and I kind of just tap it in and make relief cuts and all that good stuff. So let's get it started here. I'm going to start on the top back today. I know it's tough to see from this angle. So I'm just getting started like that. Now I'm going to make a relief cut right up here. Right up here. Let me make that relief cut first. All I'm doing is trimming away the spine on the T-molding so that way it can bend without kind of having like a, a wrinkle in it, I guess you could say. All right, here we go. And all I'm doing is just traveling up, up the T-molding groove. This is the new one that we cut. Here we go, we're up to another curve, so I'm going to make another relief cut. Right here like this. I'm just gonna take it about, uh, I don't know, half an inch or so off of this spine. So, so there's that piece that I removed. I know it's tough to see, but just a little piece, nothing major. And we can just continue to follow down the path here. Let's come around to this side. Here's another curve right here, but this one doesn't seem too bad. This one isn't too over exaggerated, so I don't think we have to make a relief cut for this one. But when we get down here, we'll probably make some relief cuts and more at the uh, control panel here. And getting out of alignment, you got to make sure you stay within alignment. My little spine is kind of bent right here, so what I'm going to have to do is just kind of finagle it in there. There we go. All right, that looks better. All right, time for another relief cut.
right, both sides are all the way down to the bottom. All we need to do is cut the excess off of these. We've already made our relief cuts, and then we just gotta pound these in, and I'm gonna put a couple nails in it just to hold it nice and secure. So first thing I'm gonna do is cut off the excess. So I'm just gonna kind of get a little visual of about where I want it to go. So I want this one to go about here. And all I'm doing is I'm cutting the two sides and then the spine in the middle to try and get a straight cut. Even though it's gonna be under the cabinet, no one's gonna see it. I still wanna try and get it as straight as possible. So there we go. All right, so there's one side cut. Let's go ahead and pop it in here. And then from here, I'm just going to tap a couple nails in. And they didn't do this back in the day um, on actual regular arcade cabinets. But in my years of doing this, I've moved around a lot of cabinets. And the T-molding always seems to get snagged or pop on something and then it gets ripped off. So I like to just ensure that doesn't happen just by tapping a couple nails in there. I usually do three. Just gotta help hold things in place. All right, now we're just gonna repeat the other side. So I'm gonna do another visual, kind of line up where it's gonna go. So go about there, I'm gonna cut it off like so. go next we'll pop it into place nice and secure I'm gonna grab a couple nails next going to tap those in place as well. All right, there we go. Go ahead and stand the cabinet up. And it's gonna to be tough to get it all in one shot, but we're gonna go ahead and just stand the cabinet up next. All right, so there she is with the T molding now complete. The cabinet looks complete. All we got to do is our monitor work and it should be about done. Um, we're also going to change up the power supply. We're going to do a couple other things like that. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for this one, for this section. Let's move on to the next. All right, here's the game in its spot. In the game store, as you can see, it's all put back together and it's all done and completed. It looks great, guys. And look how it fits in that spot just perfect. Now, this is not our game, so that we won't we won't be servicing this machine. We won't be collecting from this machine, anything like that. This is just going to be on free play right there in the game store, but it's going to be right next to our stacker machine. So check that out. So there's a view of our stacker machine, our barber cut, and our claw machine that's here in the game store. We'll take a quick look at those, and then we'll wrap this video up, guys. All right, guys, thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. I know it was a long one, but we appreciate everyone taking the time to watch and kind of check out some of the things we're working on at the time. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, guys. We've got lots of great videos for vending and arcade coming your way. Don't forget to click that bell notification so that way you get a notification when our new videos go live. And also, while you're there, give us a thumbs up to like this video, guys. All right, thanks, everyone, for your support. This is Matt with Galaxy Games 843. We'll see you next time.